So let me let you guys in on a little secret. Uh, Boruto's been kind of good lately. I know that's crazy coming from me. I haven't covered it in a decent minute. But after binging the last few chapters, we gotta talk. And let's be honest, this is a monthly manga. We're in a relatively similar spot to where we last left off. I mean, Naruto doesn't have Karama anymore. Sasuke's Rinnegan got smoked. And Boruto and Kawaki still don't listen. This guy code is becoming increasingly a problem with his little velcro zipper attacks or whatever, but getting ahead of myself again. In the previous chapters, as Boruto and Kawaki stay under the watchful eye of Konoha until they can locate any leads on code, Kawaki runs away and Boruto is able to determine that Kawaki was already beyond Konoha's limits by the time he's able to inform Naruto and the sensory team. Meanwhile, we saw Ida, who gave code directions to intercept Kawaki who's by himself on the outskirts of Konoha. When the two met, Code marked him with his claws and then proceeded to fight. After Naruto confirmed Boruto's claim, he conferred with Shikamaru and Ino about the issue instead of letting Boruto pursue him alone. Determined to locate Kawaki before it's too late, Boruto slipped out and made a beeline to where he was last able to detect it. Meanwhile, Code and Kawaki remained in this heated battle with Ida reminding Code not to kill him. Kawaki then claimed responsibility for Ishiki's death and offered himself up in return for no one touching Kona. But Code was furious about how Kawaki's begging defiled Ishiki's rightful vessel and pressed the attacks on. In the midst of all of this, Damon woke up and this little dude is a problem, but we'll get back to him way later, trust me. Code claims to have inherited Ishiki's will and said there was someone that wanted to meet Kawaki, attempting to leave with him. But of course it's at this moment that Boruto shows up and frees Kawaki before the two of them could get away. So this kid Kawaki deciding to be out after the streetlights come on ends up with Code finding him literally immediately like within seconds. And now this dude Kawaki has done the one thing he says he didn't want to do which is get the whole village jammed up because now the Hokage is coming and Boruto is here and that's pretty much everybody that Code wanted to kill minus Sasuke so yeah. When we get back to the battle, Code, Kawaki, and Boruto are all kind of just standing there like they don't understand why Boruto just came in and drop kicked this guy. And this is when Ida contacts Code again saying, as you can see, Boruto's here. He's tracked Kawaki somehow, and since you went wild and didn't listen to me, I wasn't able to give you an early warning, she complains. But Kawaki erased his own chakra, right? So how is this possible, Code questions. Who knows, Ida says. Could be because he's Otsutsuki? or due to karma? Either way, it seems like they have a special bond and obviously this is how he was able to track him this easily. Boruto continues to chastise Kawaki before the fight to come, saying, Kawaki, don't tell me you were using yourself as bait to draw code out. It's clear at this point that Kawaki is getting increasingly irritated as the two start to bicker with the whole, I told you to stay out of it, you're gonna get us killed. How could I not follow you? And with Code just kind of standing there listening to these two kids. Stop being so reckless, Boruto says. With me here, Dad and the others can track my chakra and come help us. We just need to hold out until then. But that's what I'm trying to avoid. You're missing the whole point, Kawaki says to Boruto, who's in utter surprise now. I won't let Lord Seven die. Even if it costs me my own life, he stays with an unshaken resolve. Code clearly does not care about anything these two kids are talking about as he pulls his hood over his head. The others are still mainly searching inside Konoha, but now that Boruto's there, it's only a matter of time before they show up too, Ida explains to him. Huh. You got spunk, I'll give you that. And what do you think you can do to protect the Hokage, Kawaki? Code retorts. Kawaki thinks for a moment. There's someone who wants to meet me, right? Whoever they are, I want to talk to them. Since I ain't getting anywhere with you, he says, slightly irritated still. And here it comes, Code says, as Ida does her whole turn up now that Kawaki, she thinks he's in love with her. But Boruto is seemingly the only person in the absolute dark here as he looks at the duo. Hold on, who? You said I was excluded from your vengeance list. Right? Kawaki says. The code I know, you would have killed me immediately. Yet you're letting me off. For this person. Which means they've got enough influence to make an Ishiki obsessed crazy like you obey, right? So I want to negotiate with them, Kawaki states unwaveringly. 
You're pretty sharp to have realized that on the spot. Are you sure? Not that I know or care, but you have no idea what kind of ridiculous demands they might throw at you, Code Warns, while Ida blushes. The people who want things from me have never been reasonable. I'm used to it, Kawaki states without flinching, while noticing the claw mark lurking behind him. Well, I was gonna drag you there if needed, but you coming willingly is even better. Let's go then, he says. Now of course with Boruto still here, Kawaki isn't going much of anywhere and this pretty much starts a brawl between Code and Boruto with Ida just being like a creep over there blushing and getting turned on at Kawaki and Boruto's relationship. But don't let that distract you from the fact that Boruto is getting the brakes beat off of him in this fight right now. Back in Konoha, the search for Kawaki continues with everyone just still being at an absolute loss that had to track this kid, with Ino saying that you know, if he's truly erasing this chakra, I don't think we're ever gonna find him like this. But Naruto just tells her to expand the search perimeter. This is when he remembers Boruto's words though, and after finally looking for Boruto all of a sudden, he realizes he's gone now too. Code is still having his little fun with Boruto, who charges at him with a Rasengan, but Code easily dodges it by traveling in between his claw marks. Boruto only gets the slightest moment to affirm Code's abilities before a claw mark appears on a tree trunk behind him, from which Code re-emerges again. Kawaki yells out to Boruto trying to warn him, but he's too late to react and ends up getting hurled back in his attempt to dodge Code's claw swipe. He retaliates with shuriken, but Code deflects those as well. But little did he know that one of the two deflected shuriken hovering above him was a transformed shadow clone of Boruto's, who attacks him from above with a lightning style thunderbolt. This attack looks like it lands, but once the dust clears, it becomes obvious if it wasn't already that Code is going to dodge pretty much everything with these claw marks like these guys that move through pocket dimensions in Naruto, they're a problem. A frustrated Boruto looks to find Code behind him as he says, I see, you prepared a shuriken transform shadow clone ahead of time. Not bad. This is fun fighting a ninja. However, you're an amateur when it comes to karma. Boruto is stunned when he starts to see the markings of a white karma covering Code's body now. Code uses this moment of shock to close the distance between him and Boruto and lands an uppercut on him. Boruto then gets thrown back onto the ground and attempts to throw Shuriken again at the approaching Code, but Code easily dodges these and lands a direct kick on Boruto's stomach, hurling him even further away. Meanwhile, Kawaki is just kinda standing there reassured that Boruto is no match for Code as he expected. But Boruto stands up again, refusing to give up. Do you know why you get drastically stronger when you activate karma? Code asks him. Increased power and speed from improved physical ability. It's certainly a major factor, but that alone wouldn't result in such an exponential jump in battle strength. The real reason lies elsewhere, with karma's true essence. Which is that the Otsutsuki's combat experience accumulated over millennia, gets overlaid upon your own mind and body. That is why you get stronger. In short, you instantly become a seasoned warrior. If you're able to draw on karma properly, that is. Ko continues his monologue as he kicks Boruto even further. Now show it to me. I know you got more than that. Show me Momoshiki Otsutsuki's power, he demands, as he prepares to stomp on Boruto's head. Kawaki calls out to his friend in desperation, but Code's foot lands regardless. However, Boruto's no longer there. He's crouched over a few meters away with this aura enveloping him now. He slowly turns his head to reveal his transformation as well and glares at Code. There we go, now we're talking, Code responds amused. As both Ida and Kawaki watch in suspense, Boruto rises to his feet with more power and determination than ever before and it looks like he's completely in control this time. Kawaki definitely isn't happy to see Momoshiki beginning to show back up again, but Ida and Code are actually pretty interested in this development, wondering how Momoshiki's consciousness can keep on coming out when Boruto is just a vessel. Boruto's still holding on strong though and this is when he casually tells Kawaki to just stand back as he jumps at Code. Code is slightly surprised and this is when he uses shadow clones to lunge at him from all sides completely surrounding him. 
After blocking just one punch, Code gets it now that Boruto is definitely stronger, but that isn't going to save him from this incoming barrage. This is when Code starts fighting really weird. He's like using his claw marks to like pop out of Boruto's chest like this is Nightmare on Elm Street or something. And it's actually kind of creepy watching Boruto like jump and fight around with this like claw arm popping out of his chest, attacking his own clones. And it's, it's like it's just a whole big mess. Boruto isn't surrendering so easily though as he grabs the claw arm and drags Code out of his body with the help of another clone. Like believe me, this whole battle is just weird. But anyway, he gets Code out, who's already started to panic a bit, and eats a direct punch. Code uses his arms to just create more claw marks and reappears behind him again, leaving Boruto complaining about the obvious, about how freaking annoying abilities like this are. Trust me, we know. Kawaki looks starstruck as he realizes that Boruto is still in full control, but he's using a whole lot more of his karma than before. A bit angry now, Code demands Ida tell him just what the hell is going on here, as Ida theorizes that it could be the effect of Amato's meds that Boruto has been taking, but basically, Boruto is able to channel Momoshiki's powers without getting mind controlled by him. She is now convinced that Boruto can probably take Code down and that it'd be funny if he lost before regaining his full power. Meanwhile, the greatest dad on the planet Naruto finally realizes what Boruto is trying to hint at and asks everyone to track Boruto's chakra instead. He's pretty sure Kawaki will be there at the same location, but Shikamaru appears to add to the fact that Code is probably already there as well. Good old Shikamaru says that he'll go with Naruto to save them, since both Sai and Sasuke have their hands tied at the moment. He tells Naruto to be grateful that no one is stopping him this time and that they'll all set off together the moment they locate Boruto. Hinata even asks to go with them, but of course she's quickly turned down by her husband who asked her to just please think of Himawari. Himawari speaks up asking Naruto he'll surely come back safe and sound and with Boruto and Kawaki, right? Naruto makes another legendary promise to do just that. He'll go to the ends of the earth to bring these two back. Meanwhile, back at the battlefield, Boruto is kind of just doing his thing now as he tries to absorb Code's claw marks with his karma, but it fails. Kawaki tells him that it's because they're physically embodied chakra with iron mixed in from Code's blood, calling them composites. In simpler terms, they're like physical matter. But Kawaki has way more important questions to ask, like, what is going on with Momoshiki right now? Why is Boruto looks like he's in full control? And why is he stronger than ever? Boruto plays the don't know, don't care card, but admits that this has never happened before. Kawaki has less than zero faith in this new power from Boruto, saying how unreliable it is, and logically speaking, at any given moment, he can just lose his mind to the point of no return to Momoshiki, and then what? Boruto's mind is much simpler though, as he says that if they can beat Code, all the problems are going to be gone, right? So let's think so for now at least. Code reminds them that those meds aren't doing anything like they think they are, and that Momoshiki is very much still inside Boruto, labeling Boruto an Otsutsuki. He says that Boruto is still very valid Tintel's fodder, and will make a top tier sacrifice regardless. Boruto doesn't want any of that, I mean, not, neither one of these guys want to be eaten alive, but Code keeps running his mouth about how Boruto's Otsutsification still isn't quite all the way finished yet. Code promises to come back for Boruto when he reaches peak ripeness, which is kind of creepy, I'm sorry. Code moves behind and grabs Kawaki, singing Sayonara, it was fun. I'll see you again soon, Boruto, he says, trying to get away with Kawaki. But this is when Kawaki actually decides to join the fight finally, and uses a shadow clone to attack it. Code blocks it with his claw, leaving him wide open to Boruto's Rasengan. Code teleports away just in time and complains about how Kawaki had agreed to go with him at first. Kawaki corrects him though, saying that he does everything for Naruto, and Naruto only. If I was Code, I would be getting irate right now dealing with these two kids, as he pleads with them that everything would just go smoother if they obey him for now. Boruto isn't going for any of that however, especially with this new power he's come across, as he provokes Code even more to attack him. Meanwhile, Naruto, the seventh Hokage, the strongest in the leaf, finally, after almost 15 minutes of content, locates Boruto and realizes an unknown person is there too. 
They tell Ino to stay in full alert across Konoha, and they get ready to leave immediately. Shikamaru asks Naruto, however, how long does he think he can maintain Sage Mode? To which Naruto replies that he can keep it up a lot longer than they expect, thanks to, I guess, the quirks of growing old, or as we call it, experience. Shikamaru tells him not to overdo it, though, and the two set off. While these two were pretty much looking for Boruto and Kawaki with their eyes closed, Boruto and Code were really starting to step up their fight. The two are more equally matched now with both taking hits and dodging. Cody is hit by a vanishing Rasengan and manages to avoid full damage by the skin of his teeth. Hida is pissed now and tells Code to stop messing around already. Just when Boruto decides to switch over from cheap tricks to going all out, he suddenly falls down to one knee. Grasping and struggling, he falls flat onto the ground, seemingly unable to move anymore. Kawaki calls out to his bro worried, but it looks like something is attacking Boruto from the inside. 